हेलो प्रोफेसर कैपिटन यक कैन यू प्लीज अनम्यूट योर सेल्फ यू आर अनम्यूटेड यू आर म्यूटेड यस ओके ओके now i think they switched on then it's 4 o'clock then maybe we should yes. start yes. Uh, let me introduce uh, first our speaker today of this uh, of our webinar uh, series this is uh, tomas kapitania professor tomas kapitania from wuch technical university in poland he is i think you all know him he is really famous Uh, and uh, he is in some sense uh, the founder of nonlinear dynamics in Poland has uh, many uh, students also distributed now he made substantial contributions uh, only a few is uh, hyperchaos how to characterize hyperchaos uh, he found it in several systems uh, then a lot of synchronization and uh, in in connections and always in connections with experiments i i'm have visited uh, his lab several times and i hope i will go soon again and i'm always so impressed how he combines very subtle and interesting experiments with deep theory and finds always new insights into this i, I think he is the only one and most are uh, mechanical uh, systems he is the only one and the best one in this field and we are really very happy that he agreed to give uh, a talk today and uh, thomas you should share now the screen and start please okay. so thank you jorgen I'm really very happy that I have opportunity to speak today. And I will speak about the chimera states for coupled pendulum. And I think that why for pendula? I think that pendula is a very simple device. I think you can see it here. And the type of the behavior of pendula can be visible by your eyes. You can use glasses, but some of you can even see that the pendulum is oscillating or rotating by your eye, and you don't need any measurement to see the type of phenomena which are observed for the pendulum. I think this is a simple pendulum. It can show the, the motion like this. Of course, also the rotational motion. And of course, I don't, want, I don't have opportunity to show it here, but maybe like it. Okay, I don't want to damage the screen of my laptop this morning because we will have to stop the lecture, but, but okay, this, this device is introduced to the students, I think even in the primary school, but most of the cases were concerned the small, the small oscillations. If you go into the equation of motion, you will find that the small, oscillation allow you to play with the linear equation not with the not with the nonlinear equation and there is a big difference between the behavior of a simple pendulum of the linear pendulum and the nonlinear pendulum the situation is even more complicated when you have the double pendulum I'm sure you've seen a lot of examples of the different type of behavior of the pendulum like this. I will later show some experiments on the movies how this behavior can be complicated, but still you are able to see what type of behavior is present in your system. Okay, so I will introduce, first I will introduce some of my coworkers. And I think these are near, nearly my, 
kind of my friends or my former PhD students. I think that the story with the, with the chimeras started with my friend and very long collaborator, Yuri Maestrenko, is here. He's the Ukrainian living in Germany. And once he came to our lab, he seen the clocks on the wall and he told, why don't, why not to have more than two clocks and look for the chimera step. So what is the chimera? It's going down. Yeah. 10 minutes ago, everything was okay. Maybe to start again. Okay, I will try to do this. Mirrors on the roofs of the old buildings all over the world. Not only in Europe, this particular chimera is not a very good chimera because the chimeras were located on the roofs just to protect the building from the fire, from the storm, and so on. This chimera is not so good because. It was located on the roof of Notre Dame Cathedral, which burned, as you know. Okay, why the chimeras were also, I think, close to us, close to the people in Watch, and particularly close to the people at my university. So I'm in the technical university. And when I was a student and were early when I started to work at this university, the biggest dynamical problem connected with the industry, and at the time in which we had only the textile industry, was how to reduce the noise at the textile factory. I think there, in the holes of these factories, there were plenty of machines like those, to, like those on this picture. And there were the moving parts inside this machine, which were stopped at the end. It was going some like this with two stops on both sides. And when these machines were synchronized, the noise was terrible. And we always had a lot of people from the industry, from the factory, which, which was on the other side of the street and also from the other factories in the city, just do something to reduce the noise. And of course, to reduce the noise, the original idea was to, 
to desynchronize some of those machines. And, but later it came out that it is nearly impossible to desynchronize all of them. So the people from industry were coming to us and then, okay, try to desynchronize only, only few of them. What this mean to desynchronize few of them? Is nothing else but to create the chimera stand. They, were, they would be happy if some of the machines would, would synchronize and the other were desynchronized. This, of course, would reduce the level of noise. Unfortunately, this was impossible to be solved. But first, the factory is bankrupt. And currently, we don't have this problem anymore. We don't have the textile factories in the city. OK, so even with this simple example, you can see that, that the chimera state can be also, also positive in some cases. But how we went into the into chimera, into chimera studies, first we've been trying to repeat the Huygens experiment. I think everybody was showing this picture. I think it is in Jürgen's book. A lot of lecturers on the couple systems are presenting this picture, but we've been trying to, to repeat the experiment. What you can see from this particular picture is that Christian Coyens was not very good in drawing. He omitted some details. And there is also another drawing by him in which these two clocks are of different sums. So first of all, we found that maybe this is not, that it will be not so straightforward to repeat this experiment. So first we bought two mechanical clocks. We put them on the wall in our lab and allow them to, to operate for two weeks. I think these, these clocks were built somewhere 40 years ago. And at that time, it was possible to build the mechanical clock, which can work for two weeks without wiring. At the Hohen's time, it was something like 48 hours. So it was a big improvement, but nevertheless, nobody now is, is using the mechanical clocks anymore. Okay, in this period of two weeks, it was impossible to observe synchronization. So we, we tried to, to repeat the Huygens experiment in this way. We took the wooden bar, put, put this bar on the, on the two chairs, no, a little bit different than Hohen's chairs, but, but nevertheless, we've been trying to observe what's going on with the pendula of these two clocks. Okay, it was, it was, first we observed that it was a big problem of the proper balancing of the clock cases, just to avoid the spherical motion of the, of the clock cases. And the spherical motion was, was undesired because the pendula and the escapement mechanism, which is transferring the energy from the spring to the clock hands and controlled by the pendulum, is designed to work only in the planar situation, not in the spherical case. So when we balance it, we observe for the long time the behavior of the clocks, no synchronization. Later, we put the bar on two rolls. We put some oil on those two surfaces. And only in these circumstances, we've been able to observe synchronization, both in phase and anti -phase. And we've been happy, we repeated the Hoyans experiment and we found that maybe we will have these clocks 
some kind of curiosity in our lab, and there will be no more experiments with clocks and with the pendulum. But fortunately, at that time, Yuri Maestrenko came to our lab and he told, okay, two is not enough, just, just buy 20 clocks, couple them together, and we will be able to observe chimera states. So I told him that it was very difficult to buy two mechanical clocks to the same mechanical clocks. While you are speaking about 20, this would be impossible to do. I don't want to go into it. No, but we found that maybe we can replace the, the mechanical clock by metronome. Metronome is a very simple device. And if you look into the mechanism of metronome and into the mechanism of this mechanical clock, you will find that the only difference is that in the clock, the pendulum is oscillating in that way, in metronome in that way. There is the same design of the escapement mechanism and the same type of of behavior of both two, of both such devices. And it was a little bit easier to buy, to buy 20 identical metronomes. Although we've been always advised by the sellers, why are you looking for the mechanical? It would be much easier to buy the metronome, which is electronic. All musicians are using now electronic metronome, so why you are at the university using the mechanical one and so on. And it was very difficult to explain that we want 20 identical. The people usually were buying one metronome just to, just to make better performances of the musical instruments. No, but, but, but finally we managed to have 20 identical metronomes and we've been able to to arrange it in the, in the ring. And we, be, we coupled 20 metronomes it's in such a way that each, metron, each metronome was coupled with the nearest neighbor by green line and also with the second nearest by red line. I think this red and green lines were the tiny rubber or Lycra streams, which were connecting directly the pendula of each metro. And okay, what we've been able to observe, it was something that we've been very surprised that, first of all, it was not so easy to run this experiment because a number of students were necessary to start each of 20 metro. I think that each person can start at once, at once uh, two metronomes. If he is more skilled, maybe four, but to start more, you need more person to do that, to play with it. But nevertheless, when we started this experiment, we've been able to observe some surprising, some surprising phenomena. Which, which I can summarize now and later I will show you in the movie, that it was possible to observe that some metronomes like those on the second plane of this picture, they are oscillating with the large amplitude. And for them, the, the escapement mechanism is switched is switch on. I think that the mechanism is switched on when your metronome is making this noise, tick tack. The metronome can also oscillate with the much smaller amplitude like one here without making any noise. But of course, to have, to have, this, to have these oscillations, the energy has to be transformed from the other metronomes which are oscillating with the large amplitude. We also observed that some metronomes like those here on the first plane, they are oscillating with a very small amplitude. 
with a switch on escapement mechanism, but of, and, and, in a, and they are not synchronized. So first of all, we've been very happy. Okay, we have Chimera here, it's so easy. Later, later when observing it a little bit longer, it was possible to see that there is something like the traveling pattern around the ring. Some metronomes from this synchronized group goes into this group with the small amplitude and vice versa, and the phenomena is running around the ring. I think that at this point, I will try to show you one movie. Finally, I will have 13 movies, but I hope that Can you see movie? Yes. Yeah. We can, yeah, we can see it. Okay, so here you can see that those, that this group are nicely synchronized and oscillate with a large amplitude. These in front are oscillating with the very small amplitude. I don't, I don't know why there is noise, no noise of this movie. But, then, but okay, this is not so important. And you will see later that there will be this patent going around. So for example, these two were in this group with small oscillation, and you can see that they are starting to oscillate with the larger amplitude when the other one are stopping reducing the value of amplitude and behaving in a different way. Okay, I can say that this experiment can show a lot of phenomena. We've been also able to see something which we later called imperfect chimera, in which the, in the group of synchronized metronomes, it was possible to see one which oscillate with the different amplitude. Later, we also tried to call it uh, the solitary state and later developed some kind of theory of solitary states when trying to find the smallest possible chimera. Okay, so this is a very simple experiment in which you are able to see directly the chimera. No any measurement is necessary. You can go into the lab, find enough people to start the experiment. And after some time, you will be able to see Chimera. So this is something which we did at the beginning. Okay, so for this ring of 20 metronomes, it is possible to derive equations of motion. The system is quite simple. This, um, the equations are, can be derived directly from second law of Newton. You can also use the Lagrange equations to do this. That is not so difficult. The only problem is that these equations can be a little bit long. But this is not a big problem. The biggest problem is this momentum here. And this is momentum, which is given into the pendulum. Into the pendulum by the escapement mechanism. So as you see, this noise 
is due to some impacts, like in this textile industry machines. And this impact means that the system is not continuous, not differential. So unfortunately, this momentous is not a continuous function. But nevertheless, you can, you can, you can integrate this equation and see from the, from the simulations that the behavior which was observed in our experiments is governed by the, by the Newton's dynamics and that you can observe in simulations the same phenomenon. Okay, later we've been trying to make some simulations in a little bit different case. We've been trying to, to play something with the candelab. So imagine that you are in the old palace and that you have the light system in the, in the building, not one like or something more complicated than one which I have in my room here. But if there is, if there are number of pendula hanging from this ring and this ring can, can rotate around this axis here. So in this case, it is also possible to observe a number of a number of interesting phenomena. And I think that you can also observe the sinusoidal wave. The sinusoidal wave is, is nothing interesting, it's just simply the, the phase synchronization. And there is a wave just going around, around, the, around the ring. I think this is something that can be observed at the soccer games. And I think it became famous after in 19, 1986 when the World Cup was played in, in Mexico. And some people are calling it also the Mexican wave. No, may, mainly not, not as, the, as, the, as the kind of phase synchronization, but as the behavior of the people on the, on the stadium. But nevertheless, what the people are performing is some kind of phase synchronization. So this is the, the simplest case. And this is observed when, the, when everything is okay on the stadium and, and when all the people are happy, which is very, not very common because if one group with one supporters are happy, the second one are not so happy, so you can have a different type of behavior. You can have, um, well, let, let, let's say something which we started to call a traveling chimera. So I think that this group here are nicely synchronized. This, this group in blue, they are uncorrelated and behave in a in, in different way from those two. So you can also interpret them as these people are happy, these people are unhappy. And because the, um, the progress of the game can change the situation. So you can observe that this group is going into it. This one is going into it. I think, I'm not sure if I managed to show it. I cannot show this movie in that way.
okay, in this movie, you can see that there are those which are nicely synchronized and then correlated group, and that this chimera is traveling in this around this ring. So there will be more blue here, more, more red in this case. Okay, so this, even in this very simple experiment, you are able to observe nice chimera states. So I think this is another example that we've been able to see that playing with the pendula, you can observe very different and interesting behavior, just showing how complex the behavior of couple system can be. Okay, so I will go to the main part of my presentation. Okay, so there is this case of traveling chimera states, and you can also observe another, I think, trivial states of two different coexisting clusters, which is which is not so interesting anymore, but but still possible in this case. Okay, so I think I will skip two movies and I will show you another example. We organized our pendulum also in a different way. There is still a ring, but from this ring, a number of pendula are hanging in this way. I think that you can go to some entertainment parks in which you are able to see the device called a devil wheel. A devil wheel is a very dangerous device, and some people are not afraid to, let's say, sit somewhere here and allow this, um, this ring to, uh, to rotate, I think in this direction here. And some people are fun playing with this devil, devil wheel. I never been so, it's okay to, to go to, some, to such device, but nevertheless, we managed to, to simulate the behavior of, of some, something like this. And even in this case, it was quite simple to observe a very different chimera's behavior, chimera's like behavior. You can see that there are the groups of of nicely synchronized pendula. I think in this case, all were synchronized behavior is nice. Here you can see some chimera states. These in red here are behaving differently to those in blue. Here is something what the Suri Maestrenko told us is two head chimera. This is I think four head chim chimeras. So even in this case, it is possible to have this different type of behavior. And I think that you can observe it in these cases where it is possible to see some loops which are created out of the pendula, which are either synchronized or unsynchronized. Okay, I think that now I will do the same with the movie and I will show you one of those patterns. I think it is quite interesting. Okay, so you can see how this, how the behavior of such a system of pendula hanging from the, 
from the rotating ring can behave. You can see here that these are synchronized pendula and there are some which are unsynchronized with a, diff with a different type of behavior. Okay, there is, uh, I think another one. This will be interesting in that way that it will show how such a case is created. Okay, so you can see here that originally all are blue and are synchronized. And after some time, you will see that the chimera is born here and you will have the origin of, let's say one loop here and there will be one head chimera created out of synchronized state. Okay, so these are this, these are simulations. I think that um, now I will speak mainly about the experiments, which I think are more interesting for you. I won't be able to to show you the cases like this. We 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 haven't made the experiment for for this particular setup. But we, but we played a little bit showing some experiments which were first of all connected with the idea to create, to create the smallest chimera state. Okay, so we've been trying to find how small the system could be to be able to produce the chimera behavior. And I think that the answer, originally the answer was very simple for us. You need to have at least three oscillators to allow two of them to synchronize and the third one to have a different behavior. Later, we've been discussing with the other people that maybe three is not the smallest one. Maybe we have to count the, the number of degrees, the, the dimension of the system. So, so for us, we have, we have three, three coupled oscillators. So our system is nine dimensional because all the, all the oscillators are, are self-excited. So with this, some people are claiming that it would be enough to couple to four, four, four typical Kuramoto equations to have the same behavior and that they will have four dimensional system. But nevertheless, when, when playing with the mechanical system, we are considering that the smallest chimera state can be produced for three coupled oscillators. Okay, so first, the first system, we had the ring, ring in our lab, in which we had four coupled double pendula. I think that these bob can oscillate around these axes and to this bob another one is connected and this one can either oscillate or rotate around the axis here. And four pendula like this were coupled together by these green plane springs. And originally, We've been hoping to use this device as a prototype of the device to gain the energy out from the sea waves. Unfortunately, we've been unsuccessful with this idea. 
but it was but we found that it is quite easy to produce some kind of chimeral like behavior i'm using here the term chimeral like because the pendula are behaving differently but oscillating with the frequencies which are some kind related. So for example, one pendulum is oscillating with, 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 the, with, the, with the frequency omega, the second one is oscillating with the frequency n1 over n2 multiplied by omega. So something like that. Okay, so first of all, in this system, we found that the for single pendula, it is possible to find the regions in the parameter space. I think I should go from back to this one to explain it. So we put this device on the shaker, which allow the horizontal, horizontal periodic motion with this type of, of forcing. And this allow the system to go up and down with the periodic way. Okay, so for the different values of the amplitude of the shaker and frequency of the shaker, you can see that there is there are possible different dynamical states which are coexisting for the single double pendulum. When you couple four such of them, you are able to see some different behavior. You can see, for example, that these two are synchronized, I think in antiphase, and this, this one is behaving in a different way. Here, these three are synchronized. This one is oscillating with the different frequencies. And so is here. I think that the most interesting case is another one in which it is possible to see that, that some of the pendulum can oscillate, oscillate with different frequencies, like this three are oscillating with one frequency, this one is oscillating with different. But the most interesting case for us was to observe the situation in which some, some of the pendulum can rotate and some can simply oscillate. This would be definitely a very, very, very chimera-like state, which is straightly visible. You, we, we've been trying to build this pendula as identical as possible. Of course, this is, this is not, not possible to build them completely identical, but the accuracy was quite high. And, and we've been very, very happy to observe such a behavior. And I will try to, to show you this movie again. Okay, so you can see here that this device is placed on the shaker. And you can see here that not all of them are behaving in the same way. So I think you can see that definitely these two are synchronized. These two are, also, are rotating in a different way. I think these two are synchronized in phase. This one is in antiphase to this one. This one is 
relating to the different fields. So this is a very simple case in which it is possible to observe some kind of chimera-like state. Okay, so I will stop it and go to... I think in this movie, I think you can see that three pendula are synchronized. This one in phase, this one is in antiphase to those two, but the fourth one is, is not rotating, is oscillating. So for us, it was very surprising case because, okay, imagine, these pendula are as identical as we as we managed to do this, but nevertheless, they can one of them can behave in a completely different way. I think this is also one of the reasons why such a device cannot be used for the for gaining energy from the sea waves. Because it is um, because the behavior of it can be unpredictable. It can rotate and oscillate, and for both cases, the system of collecting energy is different. Okay, so. Okay, another example of the smallest chimera state is this, we just used three metronomes. We took three of those ring, of this initial ring of four of them. And for this case, it is very nice to observe the behavior in such a way that you can see that, okay, that all three are synchronized which is quite trivial behavior in phase. You can see the case in which two of them are synchronized in antiphase. And when these two are synchronized in antiphase, this one is not moving. But it is also possible to have the case in which these two are synchronized and this, and this one, but, but of course not in phase not in antiphase. They can be synchronized in phase, and this one can oscillate with a small amplitude, which is, and, we, and has the switch of escapement mechanism, and can oscillate with small amplitude only due to energy transfer from other two oscillators. Okay, so this would be all another example of the smallest chimera state. I think you have the plots here. And I think that, uh, but I think here you can see that two of them are showing approximately the same frequency. The other one is, oscill is oscillating with a different frequency. But I think here you can see both numerical results. I think uh, red one, and experimental blue triangles. So we, you can see that, that then the behavior of the third one is, is chaotic, even when it, the behavior of this one, who, which is oscillating with a small amplitude is chaotic. Okay, so this is one example of the smallest chimera state. And I think this is another cooperation with the people from Ulich. I think Yuri Mestrenko brought to us an experimentalist. They were trying to 
to, show, to perform a vast experiment in which the three metronomes are coupled together, not like, not in the simplest way, like mechanical coupling like there, but in the exact way as in the Kuramoto system. So they built some kind of the magnetic field, which, which was controllable. And after a big effort, we managed to to couple three metronomes in such a way, but of course it was it was necessary to be controlled by the computer and the other systems like this. And in this case, it was also possible to, to observe the small chimera states. I think, for example, here you can see then that all of, that some of them are synchronized, some of them are not synchronized. And I think mainly here, you can see that the frequencies are two are the same of the third one are different. Okay, and we, we also show it that in this case for this coupling, both in, both in experiments and in simulations, the same type of phenomena can be observed. Okay, so I will go further. And I think that, okay, I already told something about double pendulum, but in, in this case of this four couple double pendulum, the double pendulum were a little bit imperfect because one, the upper bob was allowed only to oscillate. And there was another one who was connected here, which can oscillate and rotate. So I think here we played with a little bit more complicated ways. So we took the, the free, free double, the free, the free double pendulum, and we've been trying to couple them in such a way that, that the number of oscillators are coupled to the single hub. I think that the people from the network theory are using such a way, the number of oscillators are coupled to the single hub. I think we found that in mechanical systems, it is very easy to repeat such a situation. Imagine that you have the shaker, the similar shaker I introduced in one of my movies, and that you are able to put on this shaker a number of pendulum like this. And there will be the situation described with the number of oscillators, a couple to the single hub, which in this case is a shaker. So in such a way, any, any mechanical system, which is forced by the common forcing, can be described like this type of network. Okay, what was interesting? I think that for the Thomas, Thomas, please think about coming to an end in, in a few minutes. Okay, I'm nearly finished. I'll turn. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so so I will skip this movies about the the behavior of the double pendulum. Of course, you can see that in the experiments, you can also observe rotation, oscillations, you can also observe the chaotic behavior of double pendulum. And imagine that we put free double pendulum like this on the shaker, and we allow them to oscillate. We took them in a very particular way, 
And I think that we took the double pendulum in such a case that there were in the periodic window. In the periodic window, you've been able to observe the transient chaos. So when you have the number of oscillators coupled in such a way of, of forced by the common forcing, you can see that all of them should produce some kind of transient behavior. In the end, they will go into the regular attractor of rotation, but on the way, some different interesting behavior can be, can be observed. So for example, here you can see that I think three of them are oscillating in a different chaotic wave. Here one is switching into the periodic motion, two of them are still chaotic. Here you can have two of them um, in the periodic wave. I think they are synchronized in antiphase, so they are rotating in a different direction. The third one is then chaotic. So this is nothing else like a chimera. Of course, this chimera is transient, but in the real system, there is not a big difference between transient and permanent if the transient is long enough. And this was in our system. Here, I think you can have the finally the, the final states. Two of them are synchronized, rotating in the one direction. The third one is rotating in a different direction. So I think here you can have you can observe this situation. Here you have a time. I think you have a several thousands of the forcing of the of the of the shaker, and here are the results of the simulations. And you, I think, no, I think in, in the experiment we had only three pendula. In in, a, in the simulations we had up to fifty, and you can see that in both cases the transient pendula observed for the long time. And I think that I will finish with showing you the last movie with this with this transient pendulum. I think this would be this one. Okay, so you can see here that three pendula are oscillating in the chaotic wave. No two of them are synchronized. And you can observe this type of the behavior for the long time, a number of significant number of the, of the periods of forcing. After some time, the, the first pendulum reaches the, the final attractor. The first one started to rotate. The two other are still behaving in the chaotic way. They are not synchronized after another set of forcing periods. The second one is joining the first one. They are rotating now in the counter direction but the third one is still unsynchronized, behaving chaotically. And this we can call the transient chimera. And only after the period of one hour, and I should mention that two hours is the maximum for the shaker to be accurate. You can observe the case in which all three pendula are synchronized and behave in the in the in the regular way okay i can finish and at this point just showing that we've been always very fascinated by the behavior of the pendulum and when playing with the pendulum 
you are able to see the number of interesting phenomena. And I think that playing with the pendula, you can feel this experiments by direct observation. You know, you do not need any measurement. You can see, you can look at it and see, okay, this is chimera. Of course, you can measure frequencies and so on to be sure that it is, but the direct insight is from the first side. Okay, thank you very much. I was very happy to have this talk today. Thank you very much for this very exciting talk. And now questions. We have already one, I think. Uh, oscillations can be confined to damp, forced, and natural processes. I do not know what the question should be. That's a statement. Do you understand the question? No. <laughs> okay, it's an anonymous. Maybe this guy can... Uh, no. Say, are there other questions, please? How can I please raise your hand? So, are there, uh, this is Lakshmanan, yeah. um, are there technical applications of your I mean, mechanic? You have uh, shown the existence of chimeras in this uh, pendulum experiments with a low number of pendulums. So do you think that this can be extended to some kind of technical applications? Hmm. I am not quite sure. I think currently we are playing with bells. We're like church bells. Uh -huh. And we are trying to, to synchronize few bells and maybe to unsynchronize them later. But it is very difficult to speak with the people who are producing bells. Okay. Because for example, when we told to them that, okay, for the bell, we can write equation and we can find the way how to synchronize them, the guy can answer you, Okay, this is not necessary. What time, what kind of equation you are speaking? They never heard about the differential equations, but they know how to synchronize bell because okay, my father taught, got this knowledge from my grandfather and so on. So the people who are producing bells are operating in that way. Okay. I think a colleague of mine was at the bell conference in Munich just a few days ago. And he and the people were shocked, even in Germany, that oh. that the bells are produced in a in a different way. There is still a different industry, but nevertheless, we are hoping that we manage to build a, a special system of bells in which it would be possible, in which it would be possible to synchronize few of them. Of course, this will be not a technical application. So, so to answer correctly to your question, I don't know anything about the technical yeah. applications up to now. Yeah, that will be interesting. I mean, uh, you know that simple yeah, I mean, I think, single pendulum that you have the clocks, uh, different kinds of clocks and so on. So how even with few number of pendula, it can be extended in, uh, from an application point of view. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, this is Sujit. Uh, I'm sorry I could only join a few minutes late, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, he's okay. He's okay. Oh, okay. Happy to see me. I'm happy, I'm happy of this. Thank you. Uh, so um, we work on combustors, and I have done similar experiments with uh, candles, uh, similar yeah. experiment. And uh, we have a technological application. I just want to point out that we have uh, gas turbine combustors in which there are several cans. Or um, and the uh, we don't like them to synchronize. So just like your machinery, which you showed in the beginning, we really want them to be out of sync. So sometimes you have multiple cans, or sometimes you have can annular combustors. So we try to um, we, we are very happy with them not having synchronized. But uh, sometimes they all synchronize, or sometimes we get.
chimera state. So uh, in that context, your work is very interesting. Uh, thank you very much. I have a question. So what is the direction of the research in chimera next? What will you do next? Or what are the things we should look at? Okay, it's, it's quite a difficult question. Yeah. I think yeah. that we have to think about the way how to produce and control chimera. Mm -hmm. If you are thinking about any real applications, I think now it is enough to show that, that the phenomena is quite common and perhaps is the time how to get some, how to how to make this phenomena used for us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. May, may I ask in this direction, uh, what are necessary ingredients to get a chimera? <laughs> necessary ingredients? Free, free oscillators, couple. But any should, they can be identical, they can be heterogeneous or uh, something. Okay, I think that. The simplest way is to have the multi-stable systems. And when you have multi-stable system and you couple them, it is a big probability that you will have chimera. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, good, good. Further questions, please. Someone? All is clear so far. Okay. There is another question from uh, uh, I see. Andrea. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll read out. Is traveling camera obtained due to the noise in the system or due to heterogeneity? Can it be observed using identical oscillators? I think that you can observe it in the in the system with noise as well. I think that. Okay, then the most important case would be to, to have the same noise to apply to all components. And I think this would be exactly the same situation as the situation without noise. I think if the noise would be applied only to, to some of the oscillators, this could be the initial input to produce the chimera. But of course, there are a lot of examples where, the, where you can observe the chimeras in the systems with noise. And also in our lab, when we've been doing these experiments, there were students around, so the noise was permanent. I have one more question. Uh, the definition of chimera in the paper, they talk about identical oscillators. But in reality, it's, um, if you work with real technological applications, it's very hard to get things which are identical. I mean, maybe in metronomes, we can make them identical, but like combustors and all, it's very hard to, or even candles, it's very hard to make them identical. So uh, is this really important that you have exactly identical oscillator or uh, is it fine for engineers to relax it to nearly identical oscillators? Okay, this is some kind of philosophical question as well, because right. I think that the popularity of Chimera research was because there were identical oscillators which behave differently. Right. If you have non-identical oscillators, there will be no such, be such a big surprise for them to behave differently. But right. of course, you can see, see that Perhaps the most important case is the slightly different systems. If you have some inaccuracy in producing, some could be different and so on. And I think for, for such a cases where the systems are slightly different, I think you can still speak about the chimera and it is worth investigating such systems as well. We, we have another question. Does the chimera state cause anything in the physical system like neurons? Mm. By Pravin Kumar. Neurons. Okay, it can it can help. I don't know. I don't know a lot of uh, not a lot of 
about neuron systems. Some of my Indian colleagues in my lab, they were producing some simulations about them. And I think that it is very important to desynchronize some neurons. And also, and also I believe that in some cases that the production of chimera state out of the synchronous state would be beneficial for the people. I don't, um, but I don't know the details. Okay, then another question. The mechanical systems will definitely have friction. Do you take friction into account while formulating numerical model by Ziva Kuma? Of course, we use them. We use the friction, and the friction of the coupling of this rubber band, and there, and there is also the friction inside the metronome when, when playing with the escaping mechanism. Okay. Uh, these were all the wait, there are more. Yeah, another. How important is the choice of initial conditions in chimera seen in coupled pendula? In, again by Andrea. Not, not so important. I think in this experiment on this big ring, we took the number of students and just told them to put the metronomes to work. And of mm -hmm. course, it was impossible to tell them to produce this of the and this initial condition. So I think that there is not so important. Yeah, that, that's the best kind of experiment I think one can do if you have several people. <laughs> okay. <including. Yeah. laughs> I like it a lot. Yeah. Okay, further questions. I think in QA there are no further. Are there from other people? Now, but I think if you will have question, you can also contact directly Thomas later. Uh, he will for sure answer you. Yeah, okay, I'd be very happy. Okay, then uh, thank you very much. Uh, Sujit, will you have a final word? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Thomas, for this very exciting talk. I'm very glad I made it in time to catch it. Uh, Maybe Ambiga has any questions? No, 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 I don't have a question. I just want to have a nice talk. Yeah. It's really nice to see that I mean, doing it numerically is one thing and establishing it in the lab, it's another thing. So it's very interesting to see how you can couple all of them the way you want it in the equation, translate it into the lab, and then do it. So very nice. Okay, thank you very much. So please uh, join us for the next talk. Uh, which is on 31st of October by Bianconi, uh, Ginestra Bianconi on complex networks. Once again, a big thanks to you, Thomas. It was really enjoyable. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Rugen. Thank you, Abigail.